As early as the 8th century common era, Arabs have been exposed to foreign cultures and languages by virtue of their nomadic lifestyle. From Abyssinia to Persia and along the trading routes to Byzantium and Rome, Arabs have entertained uninterrupted exchange with the outside world. Mainly, the way you speak is the way you see the world. So, uh, in, in that way, in order to communicate with, with others, you need to have a minimum knowledge of their culture, of the, of the way they see uh, life and of the way uh, these people think to be old, in order to communicate with them. With the advent of Islam, Arabs were able to introduce their new faith to the outside world and have been able to convey it in foreign languages. At that time the Prophet had to communicate with tribes, with people, with the kings, with the rulers of these communities just to transmit the message. And uh, very probably he used to send uh, uh, messengers from uh, uh, among, among his companions uh, to go and to transmit the message and it was done in their language. As their conquest expanded to cover neighboring lands, the Arabs relied on translation to communicate with people and accommodate the new converts. Some Muslim rulers encouraged the intercourse of knowledge between Arabs and their neighbors. Some even adopted new habits and customs that were introduced thanks to the diligence of translators and interpreters. I can mention the Prince uh, Khalid bin Yazid bin Muawiyah who uh, who, was, uh, who was very keen on science and uh, on knowledge and he used to invite uh, uh, bishops, for example, from uh, Greece uh, to settle down either in Alexandria or in, uh, in Damascus uh, to translate philosophy, poetry uh, and, and all the philosophical herit uh, heritage of, of uh, Greece uh, as well as science as, such as chemistry, many hospitals were founded at that time. The contribution of Arab translators to human heritage is considerable, particularly with regards to Greek thinking and philosophy, even though such contributions are today the target of some disenchanted Orientalists who favor a more confrontational perspective of Islamic history. The Europeans uh, discovered a lot of the Greek heritage thanks to this uh, passage through the Arabic bridge uh, going from Baghdad, Damascus to Sevilla and then a lot of uh, Greek books and works that had been translated would have been lost today if they were not translated, translated into Arabic because simply the original was lost and then once again the, Arab, uh, the Arabic translation was translated back into which happens a lot of time into the original language. Of course it alters a little bit the essence of the, of the, of the, of the book or of the work itself but many times it adds, uh, it adds an extra note. But what is the theory of translation? Can all the nuances of a text be translated in a foreign language? Ultimately, can an inhabitant of the North Pole understand the words of a shepherd in the Arabian desert? A good translator is a person who would produce a final text that evokes in the head of the reader the same feelings, concepts, uh, that the original text made on the original reader. It's, it's a very hard task. It is said that, for example, the Eskimo have more than 25 ways to talk about snow in all its different states. Uh, and probably the Arabs would have tens of words for desert. So this explains how could you, how could you explain to an Eskimo who has never seen a desert, what are the different different nuance between two uh, uh, synonyms of the word desert. The role of the translator here is to be the bridge and to try uh, to make the final reader of the target text understand what was the intent of the writer of the original text at the origin. Today, translations from and into Arabic are very scarce. Available data show record low input on a world scale. There was a report which was issued by the Arab Development Office in uh, Amman, in Jordan, uh, for the uh, UN. It, uh, it was said that uh, the number of books translated today into Arabic uh, is approximately 330 books per year. Knowing that, for example, uh, Spain translates 100,000 books per year. So the difference is huge. Probably it comes from the fact that the Arabs do not read a lot. So what has happened to the Arabic Islamic culture so that it seems to have lost contact with its golden age of intellectual creativity? Is the course irreversible? 
130 years of, of colonialism in Algeria made that many people read in French instead of reading in, in Arabic. And many people find it easier to read in French than in reading in Arabic. Although the Algerian government uh, made a lot of efforts to uh, you know, uh, recruit, uh, to hire uh, Arab teachers from Syria, from Lebanon, from the Middle East, at the very beginning in the 60s, just after the independence. And they did a great, really a great job. There have been a lot of excellent initiatives, like, for example, the 1000th book in Cairo, like, for example, King Abdelaziz Prize in uh, Riyadh, like, for example, the Arab Translation Organization in Beirut. There are excellent attempts at bridging the gap and at catching, the, this catching up with the... But, you know, uh, the problem is that the West is going at such a pace that sometimes uh, translators uh, do have uh, a lot of difficulties in, in creating the terms. And even when terms are created, there is a problem. Uh, the, the Arab populations do not use them. The internet may bring a new hope to Arab translators. There is concern that the address bar on the browser will always remain in Latin. In the multilingual world we live in, one would expect that the work of a translator is easier than it used to be. The truth of the matter, it is scarcely less hard than it used to be. The main phobia of a translator is the Italian proverb of traduttore traditore, which translates to translator traitor. Each single mistake or any single mistake in a text could utter and change the entire meaning of a sentence, compromising the work of endless hours of sweating. Reporting for Bridges from Paris, I'm Khusayel Kadri.